Hayes and Wildcat Soccer would like to welcome you to today's homecoming game between the Indians from Danville, coached by Jim Davis and assisted by Hazai Lisboa, and Joe Wildcats of Hazen, coached by Kyle Bursing and assisted by Moss McCurdy. <laughs> Officials for today's game are Miles Etter and John Bruckner. Ball boys for today's game are Damian Morrison, Morgan Mitchett, Gavin Stratton, and Xavier Hill. Playing for the Indians, number one, Noah Roos. Number two, Jacob Baseman. Number three, Jordan Sinclair. Number four, Jason Litz. Number five, Denver Lindstrom. Number six, Dylan Foster. Number eight, Steven. Number nine, Ethan Malen. Number 11, Ian Steele. Number 12, Ryder Vogenschneider. Number 14, Daniel Leo. Number 17, Gabe Pierce. Number 19, Timothy Searles. Number 22, Matthew Rice. Number 24, Derek Litz. Number 25, Porter Costello. And number 99, Jacob LeClaire. And now, playing today for your Hazen Union Wildcats, number one, Cody Hall. Tyson Davison! Woo! Number three, Anthony Patrick! Woo! Number four, Colton Nimi! Woo! Number five, Ethan Shoplin! Woo! Number six, Isaiah Baker! Woo! Number seven, Mac! Lampier! Number eight, Finn Rudy! Number nine, Reed Keeler! Number ten, Cody Davison! Number eleven, Caleb Friend! Number twelve, Riker Willett! Number thirteen, Julius! Rosenthal. Number 15, Wyatt Bellavitz. Number 16, Lincoln Mitchell. Number 17, James Montgomery. Before we have the singing of the national anthem, let's remember good sportsmanship. Everyone came here today to cheer for a team. Please keep it at that. To start coverage of this game, but these boys are about to get started. I'm here with Harry Bissett. Hello. Coach of the victorious Lady Cats from a couple hours earlier. Uh, how was that game? Uh, it was a hard-fought game. Girls did awesome. They, uh, they dominated the first half, and Fairfax gave us a huge fight in the second half. Um, but we were able to come out on top. All right. Well, let's hope the... Uh, the boys here, the Gentleman Cats. What do you think about the name Gentleman Cats? Because we like got the that. Lady Cats and the Gentleman Cats. I like that. All right, let's hope the, uh, the boys here can keep the momentum up here. And Lance Hall has just stepped in, so I'm going to give him my headset here. All right, I take it you guys have taken care of the introductions here? Yep, we're off and rolling. All right. Harry, could you ask for a better setting? for a homecoming weekend than what we have right now. Absolutely not. Chris temperatures, clear blue skies, spectacular foliage, big crowds, and already your Hazen Union Lady Cat girls have led in this game with a stirring 3-2 victory over the Fairfax Bullets. That was, yep. a, that was a great win for you guys. Fantastic uh, stuff. We, we showed a lot of grit in the end, which Definitely. is something we've been lacking this season. So for the, those girls to come out and fight so hard for all 80 minutes was fantastic. Fantastic team effort. Yep. 
See what the boys can do here against the Danville Indians. I believe they played Danville earlier in the season over in Danville. Won by a score of 5 0. So see what happens. Long shot over across. Feel free to step in here anywhere, Harry, because, oh, yeah, our sponsors today. Jasper Hill Farm, 533-2644, best cheese in the world, and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days, breakfast all day, as I am still catching my breath. <laughs> a lot of names, then that long walk across the field, up the ladder to the roof, but worth it once you get up here. Absolutely. Best seats in the house. It is. And I'll tell you, there's a packed house down here below us. I mean, Danville travels well anyway, but a lot of uh, a lot of fans out here today. Yep, it's great. It was great to have such a good turnout from our community. And how was the uh, breakfast this morning? It went well. Uh, boys and girls came together, had a nice breakfast in the cafeteria together, got each other just in the mindset of coming out here for. A Put on a big showing, and it went well. Cross over there. That was, uh, I believe that was Caleb Friend. Tried to get the header on it into the goal. And I'll tell you, Harry, both Griff and I are still marveling over that goal that Kai Gilbert scored. I mean, three defenders draped on her, fights them Absolutely. off, still has the goalie to beat, and yep. she shot low and outside. That's right. You know? Yes, she that did. She, all, all three goals. Um, were low and outside, today. yeah. Well, no, but yeah, but all, all three were uh, beautiful goals. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, the two that Macy scored were. Yep. Especially her second one was just spectacular. Yes. You know? she, uh, she, she, Kai showed great just drive to go and fight and win that ball no matter what and put it in the back of the net to open the scoring, and then that uh, opened the game a little bit for us, and we were able to... Seemed like the team kind of used that for a great launching pad, you yeah. know? Yep, once you open it up, then it uh, changes the dynamic of the game. The other team's got to stretch out a little bit more, and yep. we were able to get behind their defense at that point. And then Macy showed excellent composure in front of the goal and was able to I was gonna say, put the in two, two beautiful goals. The two goals she scored came off some, some really nice passing, really nice yep. ball movement, and yep. uh, it was great. Yep. And we noticed, too, that, uh, and we weren't saying it as a bad thing, the girls got called for a number of offsides today. It yes. shows aggressiveness. Yep, yep. That's, uh, we've been working on just making those runs through and past the defense, and they they were running through. Did now well. he's got to get them to come back. Yeah. <laughs> High <laughs> shot by Cody no, Davison um, goes up over the net. It's, it, yeah. it's important to make the runs through, and now they're making the runs through. Now he's got to time the passes better. Exactly. Keep it on sides. But, uh, and the more, but the more we're pushing that, the, the more success we're going to have. Just a, just a great all-around effort yes. by the girls. Homecoming. Go! Co -co -co Cody Davison takes the ball up in, basically walked up through the defense, put the shot on, got shot on for point blank. Nothing that, uh, nothing really that Jacob LeClaire could do with that one from that range. Nope. That was close. Um, yep, good touch up. I thought he, I thought it might get away from him, but he showed great drive to catch up to it and slot it past the keeper. Coco -co -co Cody Davison, first goal, 36-11 left to go in the first half. Cats out to the quick 1-0 lead. Isaiah Baker. Wyatt Bellavance. Turn around. It's Colton Neme back to Wyatt. Couldn't come down with it. Ian Steele. This guy's just a fantastic athlete. Great uh, basketball player. I don't know if he does baseball or not. I saw him play basketball last year. He was fantastic in, uh, in the uh, game over in Danville this year. I mean, he's just a great athlete. Yep. Hayes in defense doing a good job being able to neutralize him, though, just force him to the outside and force a mistake. Get the throw. Pass ahead. We're on sides. Cody Davison almost snuck in there. Could have got a shot off for another one. And of course, we are all hoping that this maybe possibly could be the day that Mac Lamphier gets his goal. Well, I know he was fired up at breakfast. They were making a, they were making some plans to 
get it in the back of the net. Now, do they know what's going to happen up here if he scores? Do they know? No, the game probably isn't up yet. Okay. I don't believe they do. Yeah. That'll be a surprise when it does happen. Yeah. Danville looking to get something going. Hazen in control thus far. Steele lifts it up. Nice passing from Hazen to get to break through the midfield. Colton Nemi over to Bellavance. Bellavance inside. Wanted to put get something going over there. Good pass. Just looking for his looking for to somebody to get up, up there. Yep. Yeah. Pass into a dangerous area. Big punt. I forget after watching as the defense boots that one out. We're going to have a corner kick. I forget after watching the girls' game when the guys get out here and punch. You know? Yes, <laughs> it's like they're uh, in most games. There's a difference. Yeah. <laughs> Although both Griff and I have noticed Emily's punting skills have come far from the first couple of games. Yep. She's done well. Yep. Um, and she's come far. Her her confidence and, and everything. Baseman. Excellent. Knocked save. out by Shoplin, the mini shopper. Good reaction to realize he was trying to sneak into that near post. The shopper, he is the wily veteran back there in goal. I don't know if Ethan's ever played anything but goal. I am not positive. Well, he For as long as I can remember, he's done goal. He certainly performs as a strong goalkeeper. Julius, the wall of defense, Rosenthal. <laughs> Clever back heel. Cody Davison over here to Tyson Davison. Tyson trying to put the move on. Nimi back up Baker. Working against the defender. Shot in. Save. Good possession by Hazen. Worked the ball around, get it to the outside, put it across. Good reaction from the goalkeeper, but it was great buildup by Hazen. If they can keep doing that, they'll be able to double the score. Steele working against Nimi. Steele throwing. <coughs> Was looking for baseman. Baseman turn around. Taking out Mitchell. Pass upfield. I believe that's Caleb Friend. They're trading paint out there. There goes Wyatt Bellavance. That's what you call running through the ball, eh? That's right. Sometimes there's a player there, too. Nimi, Baker. Looking for Friend. Uh, that's uh, Cody Davison over there. Nimi, shot, easy save for LeClaire. High, booming punt. Rosenthal. Rosenthal back up. Trap down. Nice trap down. Danville. Ooh. Riker Willette. Ian Steele comes up with a. You know, that ball caught him in the, ch in the chest of the face, the head, where? Danville with the corner kick.
Steele makes ready. High floater. Shopper way up high to grab that one. Excellent hands. Almost Dwight Clark-like on that catch. <laughs> the catch that broke my heart, being a Cowboys fan, but <laughs> he looked just like him. Baker directing traffic. Tyson Davidson with a run, taken out by Steele. Baker on the corner. I believe that was uh, trying to see who that was. Was that Riker Willett? Riker Willett. Riker trying to be the striker. And we've got a gr couple of great soccer names on these rosters. We've got Riker Willett for us, Ryder Vogenschneider for Danville. I mean, is that a great soccer name or what? Yes, it is. The girls were having fun trying to come up with silly signs this morning during <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> Bet they were. What can we rhyme with this name? What can we rhyme with that name? Shot goes under. LeClaire with the save. Davison, Tyson, mishandle. Throw in, Danville. Up ahead. Mitchell get back into it with Baseman. Baseman moving quick, getting the shot off. Backs the, backs the shopper up. A shopper was right on line with that, but I'll tell you for a second there when that ball held up. It was, uh Great instinct by number two for Danville to just try to put it on and catch the goalie not paying attention or try and catch him setting up for a wall and sneak behind him. But Shopin, great job backpedaling to make the save. It's a long shot high by Davison. Over the net. 27 minutes left to go here in the first half. Homecoming weekend. Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School. A lot of alumnus here. I've seen a lot of, a uh, couple of classmates of mine. We're down there earlier. It's kind of nice to, fun to catch up with. Class of 82. Class of 82. Who were the who were the stars of homecoming in the, for the class of 82? Who? You're testing you're testing my memory here. <laughs> I was gonna. Uh, well, I remember Cody Hall with the throw in. Give me a moment to recollect all this. <laughs> I'm going back a long ways. Put you on well, the spot. I, well, I was going to say, when we were talking about punting, I remember the, the, the keeper that year was a, was a junior. He was a year below us. His name was Dave Hunt. And that guy could punt it, I swear to God, from one end of the field to the other. I, I've never seen anybody who could punt higher and further than he could. Um, if you're able to do that, it can be such a weapon from the back. Oh, yeah. You start your yeah. counter attack. He was amazing. Uh, well, I remember that the, here's baseman looking to make a move, staying with it. Launches a long shot wide. Uh, the person I was talking to down below was Joe Bellavance. He played on the team that year. Uh, I remember Stephen Bolio in my class uh, was on that year. Alan De yeah. uh who is now um, recovering from, from a stroke, suffered a stroke uh, about a month or so ago, uh, played back on defense. Um, we want to send out our best wishes to him. Um, Oh, my buddy Tom Dunn was on the team. I don't remember the positions they all played, but, you know, I remember they all played. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. And that year, our senior year, we went down, we played the championship game down at uh, Vermont Tech down in Randolph. Wow. Played to a tie. We ended up being co-champions that year. I, and I want to say right. I want to say it was Pultney Proctor, somebody. It started with a P, I think. But, yeah, we won a couple of overtimes. Then they didn't do penalty kicks or something. They ended up calling the game. Interesting. I remember it was getting dark, and it was snowing pretty good. <laughs> um, 
And they ended up being co-champs. Wow. Back in the old Lang Syne, as they say. <laughs> A lot of fun. A lot of fun community history played on this field. Absolutely, you think over the years. I mean, next year, uh, Hazen will celebrate its uh, 50th year. Wow. Opened, in, opened in the fall of 1970, so. Wow. Finn Rooney shot on what? And I believe that class, either 70 or 71, they had a ceremony for up here just a few years ago, I believe, on homecoming. And they put up the long lost missing banner. Yes. There was a big write up. I, so. I can't remember if it was 70 or 71, but uh, and I believe that game was played down in John. They, they ended up playing some playoff games up here. Um, the championship game, if I remember, it was played down in Johnson. And I want to say it was a tie and we were possibly co champions or we won it outright and were champions. I cannot remember. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that little ceremony, the class ran out. That's Good way to honor them. Absolutely. Good work to keep that ball in play and find his midfield that was tracking back to support him. Trying to see if I look down through the list here, if there's anybody, you know, of course, Wyatt Bellavance is the nephew of Joe Bellavance, so we got a little bit of family tie from that 81, 82 uh, co-championship team. As I'm looking down through here real quick, I think that could be the only one. Cody Davison, baseman. Jason Baseman. Training a little paint out there. Jacob Baseman. Referee having a few words with Cody. But I'll tell you, Harry, I've seen young Jacob Baseman dish it out as well over in Danville. So. It usually goes back and forth. But unfortunately, what always happens? The retaliator gets caught, That's right? That's right. Yep. Yep. White Bellavance, nice pass over. Finn Rooney trying to catch up with it. Rooney up through. Danville defense. Baseman and Patrick going at it. Chunked out of bounds. <laughs> good call, Harry. I think, I think that's the local time. That's a good chunk. Yep. Steele drops it back. Baseman back to Steele. Steele. Cross field. Bellavance comes out to challenge. Steele, little dipsy do by. Pass broken up, back up through here. Davison, nice move to get the ball up through. That's going to be played out by the defense, though. By who else? Number 12, Ryder Vogenschneider. Wyatt Bellavance. Over to Rooney. Rooney. As we hear our resident coach from this side, Jim Bellavance. <laughs> Jim's motto, fire from anywhere. Twenty-one fifteen left in the first half. Ooh, there's a play. Cody Hall almost got a foot on it. LeClaire down. That ball would have came loose. I think we'd have had ourselves a two-goal lead. Mitchett, cross field, near side, looking for Baker. Bellavance, trying to make a move, taken out by the defense. 
Back down, Rosenthal with authority. We've had a lot of rain this past week, Harry. Is it me or is, the field didn't seem exceptionally wet, but is it a little slow? Shots just saved by LeClaire. Great, great job getting his hand on that ball to keep his team in the game. Did it seem to you like the field was a little slow, or is it just me? Uh, it, it seemed a little slower than some of the games we've had. Yeah. But uh, I wouldn't say it's affecting the play too much. Patrick. Had Daniel LeBeau coming after him. Noah Roos with the throw in for the Indians. Roos looking up ahead. Steal, big boomer up. Close. Close. I think he. Uh was pretty confident those refs were too far away to be able to tell. Now, as long as he's in the box, he can handle it if the ball is not? Nope. No? It's where the ball is. Okay. So, for example, uh, if he were running out to slide to get it, if the ball were inside the box and his body slid out, but he kept himself and the ball and his hands inside the box, it would be a legal play. Okay. But if it were the other way around, it would be a handball. So if he were diving forward to save it, got his mm. hands on it, and then the ball in his hands slid outside, it would be a hit yeah. ball, even if the rest of his body was inside. Play up overhead. That's some beautiful ball movement down here with Cody Hall and Isaiah Baker. Goal! Wow. No? Outside of, the, outside of the net. Outside of the net? Looked like a goal. Just on the wrong side of the bar. They celebrated like a goal, and the girls cheered like it was a goal, but it was just it on the outside. It wasn't a goal? Just on okay, the Okay, wasn't. Oh, darn it. Okay, I stand corrected. Boy, it looked like it. The way everybody was slapping his hand, the crowd was still cheering. Good eye, Harry. I'll retract that last goal. <laughs> Cody Hall, long throw in. Cody Davidson down. That was some beautiful passing, though, between Cody and Isaiah to get that ball over to Cody Davidson. Mitch, it has that one go sideways. <laughs> Baseman throw. Mitch, it knocks it down. Steele's going to throw. These guys play fast. They do. They don't mess around when it comes to these free kicks and throw ins. They just, nope, they just they do keep it. the play going. Which, if. if if, as long as your team's anticipating it and you react as a team, uh, it's a great strategy against another team if they are flat when they react, even at a professional level. If you know that, it, that the teams are going to argue with the ref, they're going to turn around and uh, not pay attention on calls. If you can know that ahead of time, play everything really quick, and your team reacts first, then it can get you a lot of positive play and lead to a lot of good goals. Just on taking advantage of the other team being asleep right. for that one or two yeah. seconds. Why not? Why not? Finn Rooney, inside, up, knocked out, over, high. Okay, I did see that one drop over the back of the net here. I think that's the first time I've ever been faked out on a goal. I thought for sure I saw that hit the back of the net. The way that, the from this angle, the way everything rippled, it looked like it was in, yeah. but I think during your celebration, I saw it trickle out of the back. Nah. Yeah, because I do have to shut my eyes to, to let loose that, you know. <laughs> That's not something I can do with my eyes open. It's a nice touch. Gets it up ahead. Reed Keeler back to Bellavance. Bellavance over on the far side. I was looking for Finn Rooney. Broken up by the Indians' defense. 15-50 left to go here in the first half. Cats up 1-0 off the goal by Cody Davison. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Griff on camera, Harry Bissett, Lady Cats coach up on commentary. Our sponsors today, Jasper Hill Farm, 533-2644. 
best cheese in the world and the Hardwick Village Restaurant. Open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days. Breakfast all day. Homecoming weekend. Lady Cats started things off today with a great victory over the Fairfax Bullets. And now the Hazen boys, Wildcat boys, looking to complete the sweep over the Danville Indians today. Already up 1-0, 15 minutes left to go in the first half. On just a picture-perfect Norman Rockwell-like day. LeClaire coming out to play that one. Score! That one's a goal. Goal! Wyatt Bellavance. He can score from anywhere. Wyatt Bellavance. Great shot. Just power it through the defense and smash it and through the back of the net. And he did keep it low. Yep. Wyatt Bellavance gives the Cats the 2-0 lead with 14.56 left to go here in the first half. Hometown crowd happy with that one. It's your most exciting play of the game in that confusion. If you can smash it through or if you miss the header, Wyatt's bobbles out, take advantage of everyone trying to figure out in the scramble where everything is and smash it through the back of the net like that. Wyatt's well definitely got the Wyatt. leg and the foot to do that with. Finn Rooney. Finn Rooney. Taken out. Oh, kept back in though. I believe that was Tyson. Or Colton Neme getting the head on it. Big high punt by LeClaire down. Taken down by, uh, was that Rosen? Uh, James Montgomery. James Montgomery back in defense now. Patrick goes up. Rosenthal through Colton Neme. Baker. Crossover to Wyatt. Wyatt, I don't think he meant to do that. Ian Steele. I don't know if we have anybody athletically. Rosenthal, that was. Standing his ground. Okay. Uh, and I think just the way that he came through him, the ref's going to pull it back and say it was a little, little rougher. A little too hard. I don't know if we really have anybody athletically that could match up with Steele. You know, may maybe, I don't know, maybe Cody Davidson, but he's giving away height. Shot. Off the crossbar. Ooh. Wow. Wild scramble in front. Finn Rooney. Save on that one. Chopper got, uh, did he get caught sleeping? The ball take a funny bounce or what? That was I think he just misjudged it. I think he was looking at it thinking he was going to go over. I'm sure Coach Bursting will have a conversation with him at halftime. Uh, <laughs> but he, I think he thought it was going over and just sort of watched it. Pulled back. Thinking he was going to see it roll past the goal, and then I'm sure he panicked when he saw it hit that crossbar and realized it was dipping in. Or realized it was dipping a little lower. Hazen have dominated possession, but Danville do have some threat. Yeah, they've got some weapons out there. If, if Hazen falls asleep, Danville has the potential to get themselves back into the game. Cody Hall up ahead, going here to the corner. And they get by, makes a move. It's in again. Defender's there. Free kick. Yep. Uh, from just outside the box. As he was weaving through. Ref didn't see any advantage in the play and pulled it back. Cody Hall with a free kick, looking for the middle. Steele there to get the head on it, taken back. Patrick. Steele gets a foot on it. Patrick. Looking to play the ball up. There we go, in the middle. Baseman plays it out. Wyatt. Bellavance. Wyatt. Looking at Finn Rooney on the outside. Rosenthal ahead. Danville with the header. Baseman has to skip off his head. Rosenthal over to Patrick. Patrick trying to get past Baseman. Can you hold a player off with your hand like that? 
as long as the ball is close to you, you can use your body, you can use your upper body, uh, and your hands can be, as long as they're kind of, like, you can't stiff arm them, certainly, mm. but as long as your uh, hands are down, you can use those as part of your upper body to shield the ball, meaning you're still close enough to play the ball, uh, but you're using your body to block the other player from getting it. If the ball is 10 feet away from you and you do that, then it's obstruction, uh, okay. it's an indirect kick for the other team. Okay. Pass up, Shopper out. Save for the mini Shopper. Once again, Danville threatens. A great pass by the Danville midfield. Uh, Hazen's defense and goalie did a good job stuffing it out. Baker. Plays it across. Spellavance. Through to Rooney. Finn Rooney. Shot right into the solar plexus right there. Finn Rooney. We're going to have a corner kick. 9.57 and counting here in the first half. Hazen up 2-0. Goals by Cody Davison and Wyatt Bellavance. Reed Keeler on the far side going to take the corner kick. Off the post. Same at this end. I think that was a little closer than the goalie thought it was going to be. Yeah. I'm going to sign off for the rest of this half. I'm going to go uh, start to organize the halftime shenanigans. All right, Harry. Kids. Yeah, that was that was a lot of fun during I'll the first half of the girls' game. Pass the mic over to Griff. All right. He's in midfield. Nine minutes left to go here in the first half. Rosenthal looking to play through. We welcome Griff back to the broadcast. How are you doing, Griff? Hey, pretty good. It's been a good game so far. A very good game so far. Bellavance directed traffic. Wants Finn Rooney to go up. Played back by the Danville defender right to Coach Kyle Bursing. Now Kyle Bursing telling him to go down. He's directing traffic. Finn Rooney. Middle. Keeler. Turn around. A little bit of a shot on. Baker's there. Leclerc to it first. And who is right there? Mac Donald Lampier. And Griff, I believe we can thank my wife for these noisemakers. Oh, on man. Well, it was a good idea. Uh, but maybe not the yeah. right people Great. to give them to. I don't know. Great idea for the for, for getting the, keeping the crowd in. Bad idea for anybody wearing headphones up here. <laughs> Wyatt Bellavance up ahead. Turn him down just a little bit for you, Lance. <laughs> I wouldn't have that much wind <laughs> to blow him that long and that hard. Wyatt Bellavance up ahead. No handball called on that one. Ball played up ahead. Patrick back. Little Shopper, back to the middle of the field. And that'll be a call <coughs> on Gabe Pierce, who took Baker down. Free kick Hazen. Rosenthal up to take this one. The wall. Seven minutes left in the first half. Ball high. Oh. Danville player plays. That went off his face. I could see that one. That'll sting. That'll leave a mark. Rosenthal with the rare chip. He usually chunks when it, if it's not a flat-out belt. Steele, Patrick with him. Steele gets by him, man. This guy's got, wow. This guy's got moves on top of moves. 
Lord of the Dance goes by. Lincoln Mitchett gets in with him, though. Both players down, stealing Mitchett down. Nice play, though, by Steele to bring that ball up that far. Baker up ahead, offside. Referee on the far side making that call. I mean, we could see it from up here. He was off sides, at least from my thing. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, he was offside. He was offside. Yes, he was. Two steps. Arguing with one of our own fans down here. <laughs> Here he goes. We get a controversial call like that. I know. What did you think, Griff? I, I thought he looked like he was offside. I kind of thought he was onside, Lance, actually. Really? But, uh, but it's a tough. Whoa, boy. Oh. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought he might have been onside, but uh, that was kind of hard to tell. Those. those Plays where the kind of just bobbles around a little bit, and mm -hmm. then you don't uh, all of a sudden it just kind of winds up in your lap, and you didn't kind of expect it. Those are tough to call. Cleared out by the defense. How much more fun can you have, though? You call a game, you interact with the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. You know? Cody. Cody Hall has the ball go out. Corner kick. Cody. Corner kick. Like down there in the middle, Baker trying to get the foot on it. Comes back out here to the near side, Cody Hall. Over inside, Baker. Baker back out, Cody. Makes a move, Back pitches back to Baker. Baker, shot on wide. Two fifty left to go here in the first half. Action seems to have settled down a little bit now, Griff. Yeah, well, when you got the lead, that's what you kind of want. But uh, it would be nice to put on another goal here. Seen two beautiful ones scored. Cody Davison and Wyatt. Bellavance scoring for the Wildcats today. Tyson Davison shot on. Leclerc dives just wide. Baseman, nice trap. Plays up through wide. Bellavance with him. Still playing it up through. Player over there getting a shot on it. Joplin save. Short punt. Rosenthal. 
There's Patrick. Cody Hall up there. Cody Hall. Shot on, just up over. Fifty seconds left to go in the first half. Twenty five seconds. Wyatt Bellavance over here to the near side. Baker, cards come down with a nice play back to the middle. Nobody there, blocked down by the defense. There's a shot wide. It's the side of the net. You can fool me once, but you can't fool me twice, Griff. Yeah, it was pretty close, though. It was Again. close. Again, very, very close. And that'll end the first half with your Hazen Union Wildcats up by a score of 2-0, courtesy of goals by Cody Davidson and Wyatt Bellavance. As we are here for homecoming weekend. Uh, Dan Hudson Soccer Fields here at Hazen Union High School in beautiful Hardwick, Vermont. And I have, <coughs> looking for our sponsor sheet, you know, it's Jasper Hill Farms was one of our sponsors. Where'd I put it? Jasper Hill Farms was uh, one of the sponsors today along with the Hardwick Village Restaurant. I will give them a full read at the beginning of the second half. When we come back, we're gonna, I think we're going to have a little uh, peewee action out here once again. Yeah, another uh, halftime as we Soccer see action. if the Wildcat boys can hang on here and sweep the games today at homecoming weekend. We'll be back at the start of the second half. And yeah, we're about a minute away from second half action here from beautiful Hudson Fields, Hazen Union High School in Hard Vermont. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Their sponsor today, Jasper Hill Farm, 533-2644, best cheese in the world. And the Hardwick Village Restaurant opens 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days breakfast all day. Griff on camera, Hazen up two zip, courtesy of goals by Cody Davison and Wyatt Bellavance. And speaking of Wyatt Bellavance, I have his uncle, my <laughs> class of 82 alumnus that we were chatting about during the first half of the game, Joe Bellavance with me up here on the roof. How you doing, Joe? I'm doing great. What a beautiful day. This is awesome. I mean, great soccer weather. You think of homecoming weekend, blue skies, foliage, crisp temperatures, good soccer. This is awesome. This, this, this epitomizes This is how you spend all. a Saturday. <laughs> exactly. Now, Joe, we were talking earlier in the first half about past soccer stuff and and players and everything. Now, class of, we graduated class of 82, our senior year. We were co-champions, yeah. if I remember correctly. Game played in, in the snow down in Randolph against yeah. what was the team started with a P. Proctor. Proctor. Yeah, yeah, that uh, still hasn't settled well 30-plus <laughs> years later. Now, they played, what, a couple of overtimes. What, what was? Do you remember why they didn't go PKs? Did they just not do it back then? Well, they had a, we were D3, and they had a D4 game coming up afterwards. And, of course, it was starting to get dark, and yeah. they needed to get that game in. And uh, I guess both coaches decided that, Rather than doing uh, penalty kicks, that they would just uh, leave us both as co-champions. Uh, Proctor, I believe, had won three years in a row prior to that, okay. and everybody told us we had no chance, and we told them watch. <laughs> now you were just saying you, the team had only lost one game that entire season. Yeah, one nothing to People's Academy in the rain. Still stings. It stings a lot. <laughs> The only loss. Good times. Now, I was trying to remember different players on the team. Dave Hunt was goalie, correct? Dave Hunt was our goalie. Yeah, I sophomore said that, in high school, yeah. That guy could punt from one goal to the other. Pretty much. Three quarters of the way. Yeah, yep. It was I, amazing. I knew where I needed to stand as uh, as the outside winger. I was I was down near the 18-yard line on the other side of the field. <laughs> <laughs> now, who else? I remembered uh, Steve Bolio played, uh, Jim LaCour. There was yep. you, Tom Dunn. Yep. Me, fill me in on some other names Alan here. Alan Delrichier, Big yep. D, playing the defense for yep. us, calling out everybody from the backfield. Uh, Tim Whitney. That's right. Yeah, so uh, Greg Barnes, Rod Mayo, uh, Brian Bagley. I was going to say Bagley? Yep, yep. We, yep. Had, uh, we had a great crew of guys, and uh, we'd spent the whole summer before that playing together in the men's league. 17-year-old kids getting the snot knocked out of us by all these men, but – um, it worked out great because it allowed us to really get to know each other on the field, where we're going to be, and uh, allowed us to be a little more physical that fall. And, and uh, yeah, it was great. That was, I remember that was a fantastic season. Yeah, it was special. And uh, I wish, uh, again, that we, we actually scored first in that, that championship game. Uh, you, now, you scored the goal, didn't you? I actually did, yeah. yeah, yeah. Back right, then we played quarters, not halves. And, right. And, uh, yeah, got up uh, one nothing in the third quarter and, 
Come the fourth quarter, the guy from uh, Proctor towed it from probably 40 yards out, right on the kickoff. And uh, David had no chance at it. And it was 1-1 and it stayed that way. That's right. I remember vividly now that goal you scored in that game. Yeah, Tim had, had, had uh, taken a shot probably about 30 yards out. It was a great shot. And I looked up and I realized that's going to hit the crossbar. So I went running in and uh, was fortunate enough to be there when it came off the crossbar and put it past the goalie. Key, never give up, always be never ready. Never give up, be ready, exactly. And you're right, it was snowing. Yeah, so <laughs> by the time I remember driving home, it was in the snow that night. It was snowing hard. Yep, in fact, we took halftime uh, on the bus because it was that cold outside. Yes, yes, it was. I remember I was wearing, back then, we didn't have the Wildcat suit, but we had the big, like, paper mache Wildcat head. <laughs> and I had that on, and I actually uh -oh. was keeping warm. There we go, shopper down! Oh. Nice. Nice save by the mini shopper to keep us going. Tell you, I've uh, been watching him the first half. He's got some great hands. Yeah. I, I don't think Ethan Shoplin has ever played any position but goal. Is so, that right? Yeah, that's a good yeah. spot for him. There we go. There's our Lady Cats coach, Harry Bissett, over there. Played in a uh, great game. The early game. You, you were here for what? The I second was, half of the, the first game. The second half, yeah. Yeah. Lady cool. Cats held on. That was great. Now, a lot of people might not, maybe the people in our class will remember this, but you and I and Tom Dunn were members of the yeah. morning show. That's right. Here at Hazen Union, which got me my start broadcasting. We took an independent study with Mrs. Weezen. Mrs. Weezen, yep. She Went on the uh, intercom each morning. We rotated through. Yep. Play a couple songs, get out the news, talk sports. it up. And some great stuff going on. And uh, you remember when we had the little cassette player and we were recording the basketball games <laughs> yes, for practice? That's right. <laughs> we had our little hats and our little press cards that we'd get ourselves into the games for free. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the things we did. But it was fun. It was awesome. A lot of fun. And look at where it all led to, you know? Yeah. Cross. Uh oh, nice. That was dangerous. It was. Apparently, Danville's decided they want to be in this game. Yeah, coming back, you know, looking down. We beat them 5-0 over there and pretty much dominated the whole game. It's been a little more evenly played this game than it was over in Danville, I've got to say. And, uh, yeah, I don't think they're going to give up yeah, he's quite, in, uh, he's quite easily. Definitely dominated the first half, but uh, Danville's decided they want to do something different about the second half. Must have been pretty special, too, to see your nephew score a goal. That was a beautiful goal, i got to tell you. I was pretty excited. I'm, I'm sure he was excited, but probably not as excited as, as his uncle. So <laughs> it's actually the first time I've been able to catch one of his games, and knowing it was homecoming, I said, well, it's time to drive up and catch a game. So to see him actually score, and uh, what, a, what a great strike. He, uh, he hit the ball well. Now you came all the way up from where? Massachusetts, right? Yeah, Watertown, Mass. All yep. right. About how long of a drive? Yeah, it was about three and a half hours. Okay. Yeah, so I got up this morning, you know, do the Dunkin' Donuts run and uh, head north. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful foliage coming up through a Franconia notch. Yeah. Yeah, it's been awesome. Well, Joe, I don't want to keep you then from mixing and mingling with the rest of the family <laughs> down below with us. I, I see you got some others now. That's Oh, yeah, we got know. the proud grandparents. We got the... The, my brother, and so we're having a great time this afternoon. All right, but hey, I appreciate you coming up. Very well. It's Thanks been for awesome. Having me. Yeah, take I'll care. Talk to you guys later. We'll hand off to Harry, Joe Bellavance, class of '82, my fellow broadcast partner from the morning show. Be careful going back down those ladders; it will fall over. <laughs> Harry, hello. How are you? Good to be back. Good to have you back. That was the first time Joe and I have been on mic together in probably about, well, last time would have been 80, 82, 83, so we're talking about 36 years or so. Well, it sounded like it was coming right back to you. Yeah, no, I'll tell you. It's like riding a bike. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, Danville made any adjustments, if uh, Hazen's going to do anything here. and. And it was very... Fortuitous that Joe came up as Hazen breaks in. We were talking about that championship game that uh, yes. we played. Hazen Excellent playing pass through. Across. Goal! Co Cody Davison. Ball kind of a little bit of a scrum over there. Goalie went down, lost it, squirted it through the middle. Yep. Uh, goalie went down for it to make sure the goal didn't pop into the near post. He was expecting a shot, but it was great composure to send the ball back across. He saw his teammates crashing and. They Went in. trickled it into the back of the net. Cody Davison, his second goal of the game. Good Puts awareness the from the Hazen offense. Um, Joe reminded me that game, it was against Proctor, played down in Randolph, 1-1 uh, tie, and he actually scored the lone goal for us. Wow. Back then they played quarters, not halves. Uh, 
And uh, it's a lot of fun. Interesting. Very exciting. Steel. Colton Nemi up ahead. Cody Davison right there. LeClaire. Bit of a stare down with Cody Davison right there. Steel, nice play. I see Cody in a leg brace or knee brace. Is he, uh, did he have that in the last game that I was on? Yes, there? yes. He uh, had a knee injury last year in soccer, and then I believe either re-injured it or injured it further in basketball and ended up having surgery. And Cody Hall over on the far side. And uh, was out for a long time, rehab and, and everything else. It does not seem to be slowing him down. No, it looks like he's recovered that quite game. well. Playing good game. LeClaire going to take the goal kick. Ah, defensive player going to take the goal kick. Baseman up. Jacob Baseman on the throw in. Looking up for Steele. Rosenthal play up Steele. Wyatt, Bella Vance. Wow. Chunk and Wait, a half. Oh, that was a chunk and a half. Cody Hall puts a shot on off the bar. A rocket off the crossbar. Cody looking over here for Caleb Friend. Baseman out on Friend. No, that's not Baseman. That's uh. Turn over my sheet here. That is uh, Dylan Foster, number six. Throwing in right now, I believe. That last boot by Wyatt, we'll call that a wallop. <laughs> <laughs> the Wyatt wallop. The Wyatt wallop, I yes. Like that. Rosenthal down, played off. Lincoln upfield. Cody Hall, steal back. Playing against Friend. Steal goes by Friend. Steal moves up. And I'll tell you, Harry, you'd no sooner left, we had a controversial call that I wish you could have been here for. We were passing up Reed Keeler, I believe it was. Get my numbers right. I think it was Reed Keeler. I heard when was, I was, was up ahead, and there was they ended up calling him offside, but the referee from the far side that was on the far back opposite the play made the call. The, play, the referee was up closest, didn't. There was a little bit of confusion there, and, of course, our, our coach referee, Jim Bellavance, down below, had some words for the referee on the far side of the field, but... I thought he was offside. Griff thought he was just barely on. We're like, we need Harry. <laughs> Split the decision. Yeah. It looked to me, as he broke and the ball went by, I said, we're going to get called for offside. And uh, the whistle did blow, but it was a referee from behind the play huh. that actually made the call. Interesting. I, we'll have I to check out the replay. To, when I was walking down to catch up with some of the Hardwick Bobcats, um, I heard some screaming from the fans. So yeah. I was wondering what the play was. That's what had happened. A controversial offsides call. One that the uh, the hometown referees certainly disagreed with, it sounds like. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Nice, nice give passing. and go. Nice passing from Hazen. Davison. Go! Good, strong play from Davison to stand his ground, keep the ball at his feet, and just push, force his way through the Danville defense and then and that bury is, it in the top of the net. That is a hat trick now for Cody Davison. Puts the Cats up four zip. Hat trick. Or if you're bowling, a turkey. <laughs>
Davison. Moving again. Davison back. Bellavance launches one high. What the what the boys have been able to do in this game that we uh, came out trying to do in our game or unsuccessful doing was to come out within the first 10 minutes, put another goal on, uh, to just put more pressure on them and try to deflate the other team even more. Right. Um, once you do that, once you come in, you go take get your break at halftime, you're behind, you come out trying to fight, and once the other team scores another goal, it can just really take the wind out of your sails and can uh, start to kill the game off. It went the other way for us. Fairfax got a goal, and then it reinflated them, and then we were the ones that were sort of step behind in the second half, but mm. able to hold on. But it's so important that uh, to, to get that momentum change in the game, either yeah. way. I mean, it really was a great effort by both teams. I mean, uh, Fairfax fought back from being two goals down twice. You guys yes. you know, managed to keep the lead both times when they got within one goal. So, yeah, just just a great soccer game to uh, to watch and to call. A little worried for us when their number 11 missed the wide open. <laughs> She's going to see that one in her sleep, you yes. know? Yes, she will. But then again, a little element of luck along with being good never hurts. Yep. Finn Rooney. Pass inside, blocked down by Ryder Vogenschneider. We'll throw one the other way now. Steele. Wallette back to Steele. Knocked down by Colton Nimi out of bounds. Throw in. Ethan Mellon with the throw in. Wyatt stepped right in front of Steele. Got that one. Clever play by Baker. Mm -hmm. Puts a shot on save, LeClaire. Big high punt played down by Rosenthal. Steal. Nice pass to send that one up ahead. Shopper going to come out, scoop it up. Looked like he wanted to kick it, and then he decided to go with the scoop. A lot of traffic in front of him. Yep, a little safer. Punt. Griffin coined the term... Uh, while we were waiting for you to come up in the introduction, the, we have the lady cats, and he uh, suggested the gentleman cats. Ah, there we go, yeah. We're all wild cats, but we also have the lady cats <laughs> and the gentleman cats. Gentleman cats, I like that. <laughs> I believe that's Nimi on the far side getting ready to take the corner kick with 26.04 left to go in the game. Catch out to a 4-0 lead. Ball up over. And no. Oh, wow. Tyson had two shots at that. That's, uh, that's almost from the same spot that Fairfax weren't able to convert in the earlier game. We somehow, somehow were able to avoid the ball ending up in the back of the net. Yes, off of the corner. Um, right, same off the corner. Yeah, they had uh, a girl out. I, bl I believe it was Nikki Kaliva out on the corner here, and you had Maverick with her, and I said to Griff, I said, boy, so that girl's got a little bit of a height advantage. That this ball floats over, yeah. you know, it could be dangerous, and sure enough, the ball floated over. Kaliva was right there. She beat Maverick, but the shot didn't go. We've got a ton of great attributes on our team, but height is not <laughs> one that's spread out very evenly. Floater, LeClaire down. Oh, 
Steel. He's got some great moves. Lord of the Dance. <laughs> Wyatt does not fall for it. Well. I mean, Wyatt definitely plays hard. Steel plays hard. I don't, you know, I think they're just yep. two guys, just two competitors out there. Yep. And both focus on the ball and try to compete. Sometimes call goes your way. Sometimes goes the other way. No, certainly no malice in. No. Their intent. That, that's they're what I was saying. There's just, no. They're just going hard to the ball. Right. No malice. No chippiness. Just two athletes going at it. Did you notice the couch over here on the sideline too? I did. I believe the uh, the gentleman cats delivered that. That was a score. That was a goal. That was yep. Long shot, Jacob Baseman. I think, believe caught everybody off guard and yeah. just drifted up and up and up and over and into the back of the net. So with 23-28, Jacob Baseman scores on a long shot, high floater. They got up over the reach. Of the mini shopper, I think he was so surprised by it. Also, he didn't have much time, time to, to really react. react. The player facing away from goal, kind of drifting across him, wasn't expecting it to come flying back at him, and it was placed well enough where he was just well out of reach. I say placed well enough. There, I believe there's also an element of luck to and the, the no look exactly kick backwards. And it's oh, there's a Finn Rooney trying to play through. Colton Nimi, high shot. Finn over here in the middle. Got three red jerseys there, but they can't quite settle it down. Davison. Yes, there are times it's definitely better to be lucky than good. <laughs> Free kick for the Gentleman Cats. High floater. Defense got in front of LeClaire. Rosenthal over Steele. High kick. Rosenthal looking to settle that one down. Similar kick to the uh, Danville goal that was just scored. Yeah. Reed Keeler trying to make a move. Doesn't get by. Tyson Davison does. Davison on the outside. Looking to cross. Keeler back to Davison. Davison. Tough angle shot. LeClaire. He step out of bounds? Uh, I believe he stepped believe out of bounds. I believe the ref judged it as the ball getting carried over. Ah, okay. So. If the goalie steps out of bounds, as long as the ball's in, it'll still be in. Okay. But I think I'm, I think he probably, from his angle I think he probably saw it go past that far post. Okay. And said that he bobbled it and probably went out far enough for it. I'm still confused by all that, <laughs> so I'm glad you're here. The player doesn't matter. It's all about where the ball is. All about where the ball is. Okay. Cody Hall, corner kick. Down in front. Mad scramble inside there. Ball mercifully for the sake of the ball boy chasing it, hands up against the fence over there. If not, they're down on West Church Street. <laughs> Wyatt, Bellavance. Inside, looking at the far side. Cody Hall can't get a foot on it. Defender right there. I don't think he would have gone anywhere with it. Back outside, Cody still can't get it. Montgomery pops one from outside. LeClaire scoops up. Finn Rooney looks to pitch that one across. Keeler there, Finn Rooney. Finn Rooney is a never-say-die player, that's for sure. Finn moves inside, shot off the side of the nets. Job, 
20 minutes left to go in the game. Cats up 4-1. Cody Davison with the hat trick along with a goal by Wyatt Belavance. It was Jacob Baseman scoring for the Danville Indians. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16. On your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Our sponsors today, Jasper Hill Farm, 533-2644, best cheese in the world, and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days breakfast all day. Griff on camera, Harry Bissett up here providing commentary. Gentlemen Cats looking to follow on the heels of the Lady Cats with their win over the Fairfax Bullets by a score of 3-2 earlier today. See if they can capitalize. Nice play through by the Wildcats. Good. Possession Harry Bissett. With, possession with intent. Did I give you? Did I give you the proper intro? Harry Bissett, Lady Cats uh, coach. Harry Bissett, up here with us. I can't remember if I did it or not. My short time memory isn't what it <laughs> used to be, Harry. Everyone's looking at their TVs, rolling their eyes. I think, but mm. I believe you did. Okay. I'm not sure. Focus on the game. <laughs> That's what we'll call it. <laughs> Oh, up. Still dashed around. Good recovery by the Danville goalie. Hazen's done a great job just lofting those balls up and into a dangerous area. We've had like three or four bouncers right there in front of the goal, just haven't been able to knock them down. With the sun in his eyes, the Danville goalie's been having a tough time judging them and clearing them out of danger. And with 18.30 ticking in the game, and us up 4-1, I'm looking for a McDonald Lamphere. <laughs> Sub in and goal. That might be his play, the high lofted corner. Mm -hmm. If he can get on, he's got he's got a bit of height. Well we gotta get Coach Kyle Bursting to put him in first though. He's not in out there yet, so need a big banner up here. Yeah. Call for the sub. We want Mac. We want Mac. We need to communicate to the Lady Cats down below us to start a chant from the sidelines. <laughs> Montgomery tries to clear out. Over here on the near side, Steele. Goes up against Cody Hall. Jumping and missing. Cody, I think, was better off just watching him fly by than trying to challenge it. I was going to say, he's given up about two feet of height and a lot of poundage down there. <laughs> you look, you put Ian Steele and Cody Hall together <laughs> side by side, like Mutt and Jeff, you know? Reed Keeler, nice pass inside. Finn Rooney with the speed to get it. Davison over to Baker. Nice give and go. Keeler offside. Just off. Started his run just a little too soon. And, and we've got a player down. I believe if that's a number, if I'm seeing number, I thought I saw one in front of that. Let's see if he gets up. 19. 19. Timothy Searles. Searles. Timothy Searles down, holding a knee. Let's hope he's okay. Clock stops with 16.45 left to go in the game. Cats up 4-1. Tim Searles, referees waving the coach in. Indians coach by Jim Davis comes out onto the field. Jim Davis also involved in a lot of Lindenville area and St. Johnsbury area soccer things. He, uh, Notably organized a winter indoor league that Coach nice. Bursing and I played in together. Really? I did not know that. Oh, past couple of years. I talked to him briefly before the game to get the lineups, make sure the numbers of the matchup. Seems like a real nice guy. Yep, absolutely. Now with this indoor league, would you play over in Lindenville at the Fenton Chester, Fenton Chester Arena? Arena? They uh, melt the ice and roll out some turf. Turf, and away you go. They call it turf. It's yeah. a, a thin green carpet. Okay. <laughs> you try not to fall down because it scrapes you open. Mm. But it's a, it's, a, it's a nice arena. Played yeah. some great games there. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. 
Riker Lett gives chase on the far side. Played up ahead by Danville. was amazing talking to uh, Joe at the start of the half. That game, that, that championship game they played was in the fall of 81. So we're talking wow. 38 years ago. And the memories he had were still pretty vivid, you know. It's a crushing tackle down here, but I believe the ref let it go uh, because Hazen had the advantage for a sustained period. He deemed bigger than the challenge. Oh. Missed by Patrick, backed up by Mitchett. Here's Danville with a chance. See if we can catch up here. Defenders. Shot, steal, blocked down by Bellavance. Was that off the Danville player? Cody Hall looking to move up. Pass ahead, Finn Rooney. Tries to get it by Vogenschneider, can't do it. Bellavance. Played down, Cody Hall moving in. Trying to get over, he had, I think it's that Reed Keeler over there in the middle, he was trying to get him through yes, too. I believe so. Uh, is this your man? I believe it is. Mac, Mac on attack. Donald Lamphere trots onto the field. With 14.45 and the clock running here with the Cats up by 4-1. Had a nice conversation with Mac at the team breakfast this morning. We were watching a English Premier League game that was live streaming in the Hazen oh, Cafeteria. Nice, nice. And we had some nice soccer conversations. Mac is just a great kid. I love that kid. Very gregarious, this, uh, outgoing. Penalty kick. Are they deeming that inside the box or outside the box? It's tough to see the line from... I believe it's just Dang. outside. And I'm looking where the line goes across from this corner over. Ooh. A Tough angle, though. A generous 10 yards from the Hazen wall. Easy save for the shopper. High punt up. Reed Keeler. Looking to play it over. McDonald Lamphere gets a foot on it. Back to Keeler. Tyson Davidson moves in. Played out by Vogan Schneider. Good James Montgomery. Ball and retain possession. Beats the Indians player two. Keeler goes down, back up. Great job from Keeler. Finn Rooney shoots wide. Great job from Keeler to lose it, dispossess it, panic, jump right back up, not put his head down, redistribute it to another player. We'll say that Finn shot wide, but I think he could have been trying to pass to Mac as well. <laughs> In our hearts, we hope so. Yes. Ooh. Not quite decisive enough of a back pass. Mm. Left a little bit of. Pass up ahead. Left a little side. bit of time for the. Danville offense to pounce on it and force a quick decision from the Hazen defense. Patrick back up. Keeler, Finn Rooney. Finn Rooney up ahead. Cody Hall blocked out by Vogan Schneider. I'm not sure if you do this already, but do you have night before game day conversation with Cody that's just Feed Mac, feed Mac, <laughs> feed Mac. <laughs> yeah, gonna have to. Oh, Mac right in the middle on this waiting, waiting on this corner. Ball up over, goes up over everybody. Tyson Davison gives chase on the far side. 12 minutes left for McDonald Lamphere to score here today. Good passing for Hazen to work it in. Danville plays it back out. Mitch it back up. Control, Hazen in control.
Cody with a trio of white jerseys around him. Finn Rooney. Finn Rooney. A little bit of a shove there. And our referee on this side, not a hometown favorite because he was the one who made the offsides, offsides call from across the field in the first uh. half. So he's going to take a little heat. I'm surprised he's over here. I believe they uh, switch every quarter. They do. Man of great fortitude then. Like I don't care. Anybody puts on a yellow jersey, yeah. you've got intestinal fortitude because you know you're yeah, not. You're, you're going to make someone upset. Yeah. Exactly. In fact, as I was walking across the field, the, the two refs were coming to midfield, and I, you know, I wished them a good game and stuff. And they said they liked to the think about how we say, you know, cheer for a team and stuff. And he says, I like that cheer for a team. He says, they're certainly not here to cheer for us. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they go in knowing, you know. Yeah. No, they're no, not going to win any popularity contests. Yep, that's, that's their job. Somebody, regardless of the call, there's somebody going to be happy and somebody going to be mad. Yes. Cody Hall up over the, trying to get the foot on it up over. Great first time volley, just carried a little high, but good for him for being able to get that foot on, challenge the keeper to get his foot on it and try to slot it in. They're in the middle. Blocked down, Colton Nimi. Cody, play up ahead. Looking for Keeler, Keeler. Nice play by Vogenschneider. Steal. Tried for the clever pass, but didn't quite have enough weight on it. I going to say, in, in theory, great idea. Yes, but it needed to go Little six feet, not six inches. All right. Let's see, we saw a, a person and a lady in the first game come by with grilled cheese and tomato soup. Really? Are they serving that over the snack shack today? I'm not sure. I haven't seen any since. I wonder if she brought it herself. Sounds like she forgot to bring up some up for you and Griff. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take the grilled cheese. I'm not much of a tomato soup fan, but I do <laughs> like the grilled cheese. In fact, I'm thinking on my way home, <laughs> it may just be a loaf of white bread and a half a pound of yellow cheese. <laughs> Settle in, watch some college football tonight. Pass up, blocked over. LeClaire volleyed that to himself. <laughs> Jordan Sinclair trying to fake everybody out here. Patrick gets that one up through. Ball off the side of his foot, goes through. Davison on the far side, working against Baseman. 7.45 left to go in the game. Oh, Caleb Friend went down hard, colliding. I think he's going to be able to get back up, though. Caleb's tough. Cody Hall trying to... Move the ball ahead. Coach Bersing not looking concerned. Nope. Thinking that Caleb's taking a few Friend minutes here right. to gather himself back together. Cody inside. Oh. Good okay. idea, but not quite the right execution. Good idea just for that little yep. redirect down to Friend making the good run. And Caleb looks like he's going to go off. Not sure. Uh, Our referee talking to Caleb. 
It could be concussion protocol. Ref or a ref pointing his nose, maybe a little bit of a bloody nose, yep. maybe. Yep. yep. You can see Caleb kind of checking. Isaiah Baker trots onto the field. All in the name of student safety. Oops. Cody Hall takes the throw in. Can't reach the middle of the field from here. Colton Nimi. Down to Cody. Yep. Offside. Just below the defender. When he came back, received it uh, on side position, but he was he had wandered just back. He he wandered down, stayed still. The defense moved up a little, adjusting to the pass back, and then he kept his feet still. When the ball came back to him, he had ended up offsides. Montgomery, pitches back, Mitchell. Plays it through. Riker will let. Another fun Another soccer place. connection. Coach Bursing and I also went to the great Big Hosmer soccer camp and had coach slash referee Miles okay, on, on the, the far, far side, side of the field for the last couple of years. He always coaches the oldest group at Big Hosmer soccer camp. Nice. And he was our coach, both of our coaches for quite a few years. Referees during the season, coaches in the off. That's kind of cool. <laughs> did he school you guys on rules and regulations and everything? He certainly did. No, it was it was all pretty laid back, but we just mm. got a lot of good fundamentals, a lot of good. Yeah. Uh, it's always a good week. Yeah. A lot of good skill work, a lot of good uh, big game work. Sounds like a good time. Now, Big Osmer, of course, set up by another referee, Mike Clark, correct? Yes. Hayes an alumni. Yes. Cody also Hollis. some very successful soccer teams mm. in his high school playing days. Cody Hall with a shot on bobbled by LeClaire. McDonald Lanfair looking to get the rebound. Yes. Mike, I've known Mike a long, long time. They celebrated their, I believe, 40th year. Wow. They started with six campers one year and 12 campers the next year. And Look at what it is now. They had 211, I think, was the final count this past summer. Wow. All on the beautiful Craftsbury Common. When you think of how many players have come out of that, you know, with, with skills enhanced and, yep. you know, life lessons and everything, it's pretty, pretty cool to think back on. Yep. I'm sure a lot of players that we see on the field in front of us today. Yep. This sort of a hybrid corner free kick here. Uh, they're fouled down low. Okay. So I, there's I don't see any reason for them not to run it just the same as they would a corner kick. Exactly. Just don't kick it quite as hard. Speaking of Hayes and Alumnus, down below us I see Casey the Quick, Casey McAllister down there. She was a scoring machine, wasn't she? She was. A dominant presence up front. And uh, her successor Lizzie Brown. Yes. Also down there. Yes, I saw. I didn't get to speak to. I haven't gotten to speak to either one. Yeah, I did see Lizzie down there when I went down in between the games. Taken out, Montgomery. Ball well, still in play. Shopper down, makes a save. Two thirty-nine, clock ticking. Left to go in the match. Shopper, mini shopper, mini punt out here to Cody Hall. Cody makes a move by. Makes another move, gets knocked off. I think there was a bigger reaction from the crowd than there was yeah, in the from challenge. From either player. <laughs> but it's... Uh, Ethan Mellon knocked Cody off a little bit there. Yeah, I mean, he was already off balance, and it looked dramatic because yeah. of how far he traveled. But. Oh, really? Yeah, they're going to give him a yellow card. Oh. Wow. 
The ref. Uh, Cody draws the yellow card. Not liking what he saw, but. I've never known Cody to be much of a flopper, but. No, I, it certainly wasn't a flop, but I think yeah. it was just the, the coming together. It was yeah. a natural coming together that he was already off balance. And, and Mellon's time. certainly uh, a little bit of a size advantage over Cody as well. Yeah, maybe the ref has seen an accumulation of fouls for one player and they can give out yellow cards for that. Uh, or he thought it was too physical and didn't like it, but. It, I think Cody didn't see too much in it. No. And usually if a player doesn't, then. 2-11 left to go in the match. Colton Nemi here to take the free kick. Back, Mac Lamphere shot down. Save. Someone forgot to tell the Danville goalie that Mac was supposed to score. That's right. But it's he, not over yet. He kept it low and outside. That's true. Mac has had some glorious opportunities to score in previous games. Just hasn't been able to quite. He's had a lot better shots than that. And he just hasn't quite been able to put the ball in the net yet. One thirty-five left. Vogan Schneider, Baker, back to Cody. Cody play over in the middle. Mac Lamphere goes down. Baseman runs into him. Max up. He's double tough. I just heard a chant of, we want Mac. Yes. But now the problem is Mac's going to think all the girls, you know. <laughs> <laughs> One minute left for MacDonald Lamphere to score here today. Chip in, Bellavance. Reed Keeler, cross, wide open net. Ball behind Cody. Offsides. And it looks like the Gentlemen Cats will push their record to 7-3. to three. They go on the road for the next couple of games at Oxbow, at Fairfax. Girls play away as well, right? You guys yes. are going to Missisquoi. Wednesday we travel to Missisquoi. Uh, it's up in Swanton, correct? Yes. It'll be a long bus ride, but uh, with the day off from school, yes. we'll have uh, plenty of time to get there, be ready, and hopefully uh, carry some momentum over into our next game. Montgomery moves up. Oh, feed Mac. Feed Mac. Montgomery wanted to get in there. Score! James Montgomery just wasn't going to be denied. But, you know, I think he had Mac open. So do I. With a clever pass off to the right. Yes. I think it was Max moment. But some beautiful moves by Montgomery yeah, oh, to get I, in there and get the I, shot. Just great. We're, we're saying that, but it it's yeah. shouldn't take away from the excellent work by Montgomery. Exactly. Weave through the Danville defense, then smash into the back of the net. Looked almost reminiscent of Kai's goal. Just wasn't yes. going to be denied. Yep. Got no, up through. He, he knew what he wanted to make happen, and he made it happen, and it was a great goal by him. But for the sentimental ones out there. Yes. <laughs> that will make... That will make your final 5-1. to one. Once again, James Montgomery, the beautiful goal right there at the end, weaving and bobbing up through the uh, Danville defense. Cody Davis with a hat trick. Wyatt Bellavan scoring as well. It was Jacob Baseman scoring for the Danville Indians to make the final 5-1. Lance Hall with the call for HCTV Channel 16 on your local cable dial, streaming worldwide and archived at www.hctv.us. Our sponsors today, Jasper Hill Farm, 533-2644, best cheese in the world, and the Hardwick Village Restaurant, open 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. seven days breakfast all day. Griff on camera. Harry Bissett, I will thank you. And remember that I've thank thanked you. you for coming up, as always, lending commentary to the game. And uh, we'll see everybody at our next home game.